Hello once again guys, you're watching High Voltage Mayhem and today we've got an interesting radio to take a look at. So this right here is a Thomas Collectible Edition radio, or an American radio as stated on the back. Now this right here looks to be an old radio, as you can see the cabinet finish is really nice and it has that old radio appearance when you look at the speaker grill and you see this little indicator here, it looks like an old radio really. Um, I was fooled at first when I first saw this thing sitting on the shelf. However, I discovered that because of the tape player located on the side, this radio may not be as old as we think it is. Now, this really does resemble something from the 40s. However, this radio is transistorized and contains no tubes. So that'll be an interesting fix, this one, because we don't typically do transistorized equipment on this channel. However, today is an exception. So without further ado, let's take a look at this radio a little bit more in depth and see what's wrong with it. Now... When I first got it, they just told me it doesn't work, so we're going to dive into restoration and see what we can do. So on the front panel, you have a volume knob and power. And then right here is the tuning switch. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that the tracking on the dial doesn't work, so we'll definitely look at that. And then we have a switch for AM, FM, and tape. So, let's go ahead and go into the back cover, take everything apart, and see what we see on the inside. Okay, so we are looking at the backing of this radio. So this very back of it, we've got this kind of cardboardish material on there. And the first thing they say on here is electric shock. You know, all these big warnings and uh, no user serviceable parts inside. Well, you see, that's very interesting because there are actually plenty of user serviceable parts inside this radio, including capacitors. You know, we change those all the time on radios, and we've got transistors, you know, resistors, power transformer, except the power transformer on this thing is tiny. And um, so all these things are definitely used or serviceable parts if you got them laying around or if you can get them online. So we, you can get all the parts you need for this radio online without worry. So just one quick warning, you know, it says electric shock and all these things on there. However, that is partially true because there is 120 volts AC on the power cord and that is about the highest voltage you'll find in this radio that is the power cord so those old vacuum tube radios however from the 40s the real version of this radio i wouldn't go messing around with if i were you unless you know exactly what you're doing and you're confident with what you do that is because there are 400 volts typically found in those older radios and if not thousands on some of the great bigger ones and that can actually kill you dead before you hit the floor Especially combined with big electrolytic capacitors and all those sort of things, that's actually dangerous. But for this case, um, unless you know what you're doing, I wouldn't take those old ones apart. But this one, we can definitely work on. So when you say no user serviceable parts, that's actually false. There are plenty of things, as you'll see in this video. So without further ado, let's take the cover off and uh, get with it. So I've went ahead and taken the back cover off this radio so you can see what's inside. The first thing we got is an 8 ohm. 3 watt speaker, so not very big, but still got a pretty sticky magnet on there, so that'll be a good speaker, it'll sound decent. Uh, let's go ahead and pan the camera down so you can see what all is on the inside. So right here, we have our transistorized circuit board. As you can see, there are no tubes to be found here, no big heavy transformers or anything, except this little tiny little power transformer, which is actually a step down for the low voltage circuitry. And then um, this big motorized unit confused me at first, and then I realized it was a tape player. So right here we have a motor that drives a 9-volt motor. It actually has a belt on there and drives the tape player, so the tape will spin. And then we've got the latching mechanism for the tape, and then our signal input that goes to the amplifier. So let's go ahead and take just a brief look back at the actual circuit board in here, and we'll see what there is to see. So we have a couple little adjustments right here that we'll definitely be taking a look at. Some capacitors, and then these are like film capacitors, those are always good. And these are all modern day electrolytics, so there won't be any need to replace capacitors unless there's evidence of a bad capacitor like bulging or shorting out or anything like that. So of course we have our receiving antenna and we have the rest of the circuit here. So this right here is kind of like... um. Let's see, how do I reference this? On an old tube radio, you have an IF transformer, and you can always adjust the IF transformer for peak amplitude. So you can always do some adjustments there, but in modern day circuits, everything is so small. So we got this little bitty square deal right there with some adjustments on there. So getting this radio working will be interesting because like I said, transistorized circuits. So the first thing we're gonna have to do is actually take the tape player, totally remove it, and then we're gonna have to have access to the circuit board in order to fix the tracking. So without further ado, let's get rid of the tape player and um, take that circuit apart. 
All right, so now we've got that tape player out of the way. Now what was really interesting about that is that they have a connector, a pin connector, that attaches a tape player to the circuit board, or the motherboard, I guess if you want to call it that. However, they ran a ground wire and just soldered it right here to this connection, so they didn't bother making a connector for that, so the tape player is still attached. So even if you remove this, it's still stuck to the circuit board. So in order to remove it, I've just moved the wires and set the thing over here on top of the speaker, making sure not to puncture a hole through the little thin paper on the speaker. So always just set that stuff aside if you don't want to fool with desoldering it while you work on the rest of the circuit. Now if you'll notice, a lot of this is encased in this waxy kind of material right here. So if there are any adjustments around there that is coated in this stuff, you will have to puncture through the wax to actually make adjustments. Like for instance right here, you can see there's, there's a place where you can put a screwdriver and do some adjustment. You'll always have to get rid of the wax first in order to do that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to have to take out this circuit board and access the bottom side of it where there's a string. So right up under here, right where you can't see it, there is a string through this hole. If I move that, you can see the little string, a little white string. Now what that string does is that it connects to the pulley and the knob and actually moves the dial indicator. Well, since the dial indicator is working, the string is probably either broken or it's just falling off the pulley. So let's go ahead and remove this whole entire unit and get under there and see if we can't go ahead and repair the dial indicator. Alright, so now we've got the actual chassis of this radio removed from the front cover so you can actually see the dial indicator. So right here we've got our indicating needle for what channel we're on and then we've got our uh, controls right here and this is actually the chassis of this radio. Isn't that very interesting on this transistorized radio? Um, how small everything can be made. See, this is just plastic. There's not much to it. It's really thick. And then there's our components on the back. And all there is is a little dial indicator right there on the front. And we've got two incandescent lamps here to kind of give it that old glowing effect like the, our, our old radios have. So the first thing you will see is that little string is just kick the bucket. So we're going to have to go in there and restring this whole thing. And while we're at it, I would like to mention something to you. Um, I'm not sure if the camera can really see this, but this stuff is miracle spray, I call it, because this is excellent for cleaning potentiometers and all that. So to avoid problems in this radio, you can actually uh, take the, the uh, variable resistor here, the potentiometer, and spray this stuff in there, fill it all up. It's a cleaning solution, so you just spray it in the potentiometer and then move the knobs back and forth a bunch of times, and that should actually dissolve all the the, the build up on the carbon tracks in there and give you a nice clean sound so you don't get that scratchy effect whenever you move the volume knob. So if you've ever had those radios that are all scratchy whenever you move the volume or try and tune it, that's usually what it is, dust in the potentiometer. So let's go ahead and restring this and we'll go ahead and clean the potentiometers and uh, see what else this thing needs and then we'll go from there. Alright, so what I've done here is just remove this little plate cover that shows the dial indicator what position you are on the radio. And then I've also removed the little indicator itself. So right here, the little needle indicator is removed from here. Very simple, just pull it off. It's held in there by pressure, so you're not going to break anything. Now the issue I see, besides the string being broke, is that this actual wheel here was rotated past its intended rotational limit. So when you move the dial indicator around, you can see it naturally stops right here and it doesn't want to go anymore. Well, this thing was way rotated past where it's supposed to be, and it was stuck. It was locked in position, so when I tried to restring the radio and turn the dial and everything, nothing would happen. It was just all seized up. So I'm assuming somebody went a little bit beyond the intended channel range and got the wheel stuck there, and uh, perhaps that broke the string as a result. So um, I'm hoping there's no actual damage to the tuning mechanism. So we'll find that out here in a second. So now I've freed the wheel up. As you can see, it rotates. And what we're going to do before we string it up is make sure that it's operational. So we're going to go ahead and pull this forward just to avoid any shorts on here. And power it on briefly after I check and make sure nothing is shorted out. We're going to go ahead and turn on the volume. So we'll turn the power on here for just a second. You'll see we have our little indicators down there lighting up. And we'll turn the volume up. Well, that's a pretty good sign right there. So let's go ahead and move the wheel. So that's a really good sign right there. 
that we've got an operational radio that we can piece back together once we restring everything. And I've already cleaned all the potentiometers and the selector switches. And um, this actually looks melted right here. However, that was just where the plastic was carved out in order to accommodate for the selector switch's bulky size. So, now that that's done, we'll just have to restring all of this back around this loop. So this is kind of like a, a capstan on a ship, in other words. So you can actually hook a line around here and then around there. And then you'll get, use tension in order to turn this. So it's just basically the friction of that line that rotates this. However, it is kept tension by the spring. So when you string it all up, you string it up and then attach the spring on there to hold tension on this all the time so it doesn't slip because that would be bad if your knob was slipping then your radio would be all out of alignment and everything else and you just have one problem after another so that's why there's always a little spring located in there so you string it up and then get it around here and then attach the spring and that keeps it all nice and tight so we'll go ahead and restring this and then piece it all back together and uh Another thing we could do before we um, send this thing back to who it belongs to is perhaps oil all the moving parts in the tape player and test its functionality and clean the record heads and the playback heads and make sure that... Actually, this doesn't have any record heads. It's just a player, so that's why there's only one head right here. So I'm used to working on the reel-to-reel -reel stuff that has three record heads. It has three heads, you know, a record head, a playback, and an erase head. However, this has only got one so one little uh, electromagnetic playback head and then a motor drive unit. Couldn't get really much simpler than that. So we'll just go ahead and clean all that up and make sure it's all operational. Put it all back together and then check components. And that's it. That's really all this radio needs. So we'll go ahead and string it up and see what we can do then. All right, so once you've gotten your string back on the track the way it should be, all you do is make a loop from the spring, go around and loop around here and go back around and clip it on there. It's that simple. So basically the string starts here, is tied on there, makes a lap around through there, loops around, and then comes right here to this spring. Now that spring, like I mentioned before, keeps tension in this line. You see how that line's always tight so that whenever you turn this right here, you actually get the dial indicator to move with it. So that's why there's necessary to have a spring. Now when you're putting this on, just keep in mind you can always grab a pair of needle nose pliers and actually pull the spring so that the string is real loose and easy to wrap around on there. And then once you've got it all wrapped around nice and you're ready to let go of the spring, the spring will take up all the tension and do all the work for you. Now what needs to happen is that we've all got the string set up. We need to do an alignment, so to speak. We got to actually take our dial indicator, put it all back together, and actually make sure that the tracking is correct. So when this needle moves over, that we're actually on the right station. So we're gonna have to identify a radio station, either AM or FM, and make sure that it's aligned and that it's tracking properly. So we'll go ahead and do that, and we'll see you in just a minute. All right, so now what we gotta do is actually align the dial indicator to the right station. So what I've done is I have another old radio here. We'll just turn it on. Wherever you want us. So you hear that station. So what we're going to do is turn this radio on here. So we'll go ahead and get that on, get some volume, and we're going to turn this one up as well. They're pushing through this And we're going to align this one until they're both the same. Well, you know, it's given this quite a bit of thought. There we go. With the hashtag Me Too, with all of this uh, this this feigned outrage. And now we should turn this one off. And what the Democrats are willing to sacrifice in order. All right. So now that we've got that radio aligned, all we will do is check our channel on this radio and make sure that we take the readings of this dial indicator, knowing that it's accurate, and then transfer it over to here by adding our little needle at the right frequency. So, now that that is done, we'll go ahead and set the needle back in place and this radio should be good to go. Okay, so now that we have the radio chassis here all set up and everything's ready to go, I would sit there and I would listen to a particular radio station until I hear their call sign. Well, once I heard their call sign, they usually say the frequency right after that, so I heard the frequency 100.3 megacycles. So what I do, is now adjust this dial to 103. See, we were slightly off, so we'll just do, that was a little too much, so we're gonna do a little bit of adjustment by moving this thing to 100, and then slightly, slightly over 0.3, and then push that thing in there good. Uh, that's a little much, but we'll go back 
pull it out and go 100 right there and then point three and then push it in and now our radio should be good to go so right there about 100.3 and then you just put a little pressure on there to lock it in place and now that radio is ready to go so let's put it all back together and I'll let you hear it working well folks there you have it so now this radio is all pieced back together and it's time to test it out so we'll go ahead and turn it on and see what it sounds like we have our little incandescent indicator lights on sounds pretty good to me made in china fixed in america that's high voltage mayhem for you so i hope to see you in another video and subscribe for more content